Hi, my name is Paul Friedman. I'm the founder of the Marriage Foundation. Hopefully you've been watching our videos because our approach to marriage and relationships is so different from what is currently out there, especially a topic like this, which is sex a big part of a relationship? Because our world is so far behind. Think about it. We go to school and we take all kinds of subjects that are, some are interesting, like history, to me anyway. We take subjects that are useful, like English, so we can communicate well. We take math, all of us have to have some math. But where are the how to live classes? Where do we learn about right behavior and why right behavior is right behavior? Where do we learn about ourselves as either a man or as a woman? Because biologically we're very different and so psychophysiologically, which means how the body affects the mind, makes us behave very differently in similar situations compared to the other gender. We don't learn these things. In fact, if anything, there's a lot of bad information out there. Uh, for instance, we don't learn anything about marriage that is good, that is useful. We have an over 50% divorce rate. So you're in a relationship or you're already married. And what are some of the things that were the guiding principles? Well, we're not going to have sex until the third date. Things like that. And in the context of who we are, what we are, that kind of rule is insane. We have to understand something, regardless of the few who don't believe in God and avoid spirituality, we still have to be realistic. Religion isn't so important to many people, but what is important is to acknowledge that we are not the body. We're not the body. We're not the mind. We're the soul. We are a soul who has a body. We're a soul who has a mind. And there's clear and reasonable explanations of how all of this ties together. So then we come to the question about sex. It's a big question. I used to be a divorce mediator. And I can, you know, not just a few men would tell me that you know, their wife was giving them plenty of sex before they were married and then afterwards it fell through the hole and the wife was too busy, she got pregnant, she had to take care of the kids, she was too tired. All of these reasons for not having sex. And I'm here to tell you that there are definite influences for a woman in terms of when she wants to have sex when she doesn't want to have sex. Men, men have sex all the time. Most men, not all. There's some men who have hurt themselves biologically. Their physical body isn't in good shape. They're not as interested in sex. But most men are interested in sex as often as possible. So the real question is a question that men ask because they're wondering, is this what it's like? And women are asking the same question, but from a point of, how come he wants sex from me all the time? I don't want to. So let's put sex in the context of who we are, souls. Number one, as a soul, and don't be frightened by what I'm gonna say because it builds out into a very reasonable explanation. So as a soul, the soul is transcendent, which means it's a spiritual thing. You are a spiritual creation. You know, the scriptures say God created man in his image. Did it mean with fingers and toes and belly buttons? In his image means we're spiritual. We are 
And the soul's nature is love above all other things. We are love. Joy. We are joy. Our essential nature is joy and wisdom. Those are the three components of the soul. And I'm not talking about wisdom from experience. I'm talking about it's innate. It's a deep wisdom. But we come into these bodies and we are conditioned by our biology, our particular gender. But when we get married, when we find our soulmate, it's a real term, it's not made up by a greeting card company. When we have connected with our soulmate, then sex is no longer recreational. It's no longer manipulative. It's no longer driven, it shouldn't be, by the drive to procreate, which is subordinate to the drive to survive. You see, all of us, because we're alive in a human body, in a human body that is animal by nature, is imbued with this drive to survive. It's in every living thing. And just subordinate to that fight or flight is the need that a body has to procreate. So there will be more. Again, for the purpose of survival. But we are transcendent. We're supposed to live in marriage, on the plane of love, where we're experiencing an interchange of love with one another. That's how it's supposed to be. We're supposed to strive for that. We're supposed to make that happen. It's not something that just comes natural. We have free will, so we're supposed to make that happen. When we do, when we transcend the component of have to have it so we could have more of us, which is very subconscious, or we're going to use it for recreation because it's the greatest recreation there is. No, we're supposed to experience love first. Get that connection going and then the sex, I even hate using the word because in this context that I'm describing, the sex is truly making love. It's just not a replacement term that makes it seem better. And then it is amazing because then you're using your sex, your physical body to connect at the level of the soul. And then you experience what sex is intended to be for a human being. Sure, you could say, well, recreational sex, why isn't that intended? Well, you can, it's okay. But the experience of making love on that higher plane dwarfs that experience of recreation. So if you're thinking recreational sex is like amazing, it's great. It's only because you haven't experienced the other. So rather than directly go, oh, we're not gonna have sex anymore, or Paul Friedman from the Marriage Foundation said, we should only have sex if we're making love. No, you still have to, if you're the wife, you have to take care of your husband's needs. But you start moving in the right direction learning how to experience that connection. And then is sex a big part of a relationship? In a really healthy marriage, it's a teeny tiny part, but making love is a huge part. Making love even without physically touching. Way back in the day when I was recruiting therapists to learn this, because we've been at this for 20, over 20 years, I was meeting with some of the best therapists in San Diego, and one guy liked him. He was a nice guy. He was a Christian psychologist. Unfortunately, you put psychologist attached to Christian or Jewish or anyone else, it kind of ruins the day. And I was describing to him how intimacy can be experienced without touching. He flipped out because the mind, his mind, 
was telling him, but I want my sex, you see? So it's a very tricky thing. The best thing to do is learn about marriage from us at the Marriage Foundation. Either use one of the books that I've written, or if your marriage is in trouble, get the course for women or the course for men so you could get the benefits of marriage, which are phenomenal. I hope this was helpful for you. Like the video. If it was, leave a comment if it was. And even if it wasn't, I'm Paul Friedman. I founded the Marriage Foundation. We're here to serve you. Thank you for joining. God bless you. And I hope we see you again. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out. God bless and take care.